The design of bicycle frames over the years has changed in subtle ways within set parameters. Bikes have remained recognisable, while the intricacies of design are focused on weight, performance, geometry, aesthetics and materials. Frame design is now a very technical, computer-aided process. The design process starts off with um, pretty much a review of last year. We also look at the market as a whole, what are the new trends, what's coming on, what sort of um, uh, price points we need to hit, what sort of materials are coming in, what's the new latest, uh, latest technology. In terms of designing a bike from scratch, sort of basic geometry is normally drawn up in, in, in bike CAD whereby it will then be transferred to a 3D CAD program where you'll mock up the tubes, get 3D visibility, check clearance of, of tyres, chain rings, that sort of thing. And then typically that's then transferred back to a 2D drawing, which is then given to the, to the frame maker, which they, they then use to produce the frame. The actual nuts and bolts of the process from our end are that we will come up with a basic principle that everybody is loosely happy with um, and that will then get built into an Adobe Illustrator file which will be a basic layout of the bike frame. So it will show a side on top and front and rear elevation and it will show three quarter angles just to really describe in every last detail all the, all the elements that are expected of that bike. So everything we do is empirically tested in as much as we will simply build something and test it by riding it. Having a professional team means that we can give it to, give, a, give the product to guys who will test something further, faster, harder than any of us will ever be able to ride a bicycle. By sponsoring the team, your research and development moves on at a faster pace. Um, so we have professional riders out there pushing the bikes to, to extreme, uh, in extreme circumstances. If we were to design a new bike today that we wanted to, our team to ride professionally on, we would have to pass that through the UCI to seek approval for that particular frame design. 40 years ago, the design principle was very much the double diamond, large triangles, very strong um, construction. Change that was partly mountain bike influence, but mainly as materials improved, um, we were able to get the same strength and stiffness levels, um, but without having to have such big triangles. Road frames really started with steel, um, and within steel there's lots of different construction techniques, such as lug and brace and TIG, and those have been developed through the years and each development has helped reduce weight. Titanium is a really great material, really super light, but also a little bit flexy, so you don't get the stiffness, but you get a really good weight and also good durability out of it. Aluminium offered uh, the opportunity to use much bigger uh, tube sets for increased stiffness. It also created quite a, a new look for, for bikes. And then came carbon fiber, which has pretty much revolutionized the whole road bike industry. Um, because that allows designers to um, achieve shapes and weights that was never possible with aluminium or any other material before that. On a lugged frame, steel tubing is fitted together using external sockets that slide over the ends of the tubes, increasing the strength of the join. A diamond frame typically uses four lugs at the seat, the upper and lower head, and the bottom bracket. Lugs can be brazed onto the tubes with a silver or brass filler. TIG, or tungsten inert gas welding, uses a tungsten electrode to weld the frame. This technique gives the operator greater control over the weld and is often used for thinner materials. Initially bikes were flat top tube, triangular shape. That was in the days when bikes could be made handmade, made to measure. So you, said, you went to a bike shop, they measured your inside leg, the length of your limbs, and then they said, right, this is the size of a bike. Basically it was carbon fibre that changed the world really because you know um, it's hugely expensive to, to set up the, a carbon fibre bike. You have to buy a mould which in the early days was around about a quarter of a million pounds for each mould that you started. What they found was by sloping the top tube down to the seat tube, you could then, with different length stems, you can pretty much fit everybody onto about three or four different sizes of bike. When it comes to frame design, there are a variety of considerations to factor into the process, such as weight, shape, geometry, and the limits of the technical processes. The final design is achieved by balancing and prioritizing these factors, 
with current trends also playing a role. When it comes to bike design and what materials we use, there's quite a few choices we have to make. Um, budget is usually the principal one. We'll then look at what the rider actually needs. So um, what are the balances between comfort, stiffness, durability. We'll then start to play with geometry um, so that the geometry is right for the rider. It's fair to say from what we've heard from some of the riders, absolute stiffness like a sprinter isn't what some of them want. They want something indeed that could be used on a long ride, would feel comfortable and for example on some of the roads that we ride on, the ability to soak up bumps from potholes and some very rough surfaces, that could be as important to them in the way they buy the bikes and therefore they won't necessarily look for absolute lightness as being the, the most important factor in a frame choice. When it comes to deciding factors, particularly on the high-end performance bikes, carbon fibre starts to have some great advantages to it. We can make small diameter tubes stiff um, by using a higher modulus material in it. Everything's gone from standard round tubes now to aerodynamic, so, um, so it's gone through a full circle of small tubes, large tubes, aerodynamic tubes, uh, different materials. If you look at the bikes that are currently been on the Tour, they have very much have horizontal top tubes, and that's because aerodynamics is becoming more important than uh, the comfort or the um, stiffness element of the bike. The engineering on bikes now is so good that they can actually build in stiffness in one direction and energy absorption in another, which is basically making it not quite so stiff. The idea of butting a tube is if you can imagine a pipe of tube, and we call it a constant outer diameter, so for example, if you looked at a tube along the outside, you'd have a constant diameter like, for example, 32 millimeters. The big thing about butting is you can actually vary the wall thickness along the length of the tube. So for example, along this length, the two ends, for example, on a tube might be 0.9 of a millimeter, but the middle section could be 0.6 of a millimeter. So what the butting process allows us to do is concentrate metal where it's needed in the, at the ends of the tube in this case, but take out weight, which is metal, from the middle bit. By taking out this extra weight in the middle, which isn't really needed, you could drop the weight of that tube by about 30%. Frame design is regulated by the UCI to favour the diamond frame that is still based on the safety bicycle. Views differ as to whether this is holding back progress or whether the diamond frame is indeed the very basis of good design. So as the science surrounding the sport of cycling moves on, what does the future hold for the design of the bicycle frame? Over the coming years I think we'll see bikes getting lighter and lighter. Um, I think we'll probably see the UCI drop their drop their weight limit for, for a race bike. I think we'll see bikes continue to get lighter and we'll see um, a larger level of uh, componentry integration as well into the frame. If we use carbon fibre the way we would want to do it and not with the restrictions of the rule makers, um, we would see some very interesting bike shapes coming along. Because carbon is so flexible in what you do with it, we would move probably almost certainly move away from a diamond shape, um, lose the two triangles, um, we'd be more aerodynamic by taking the seat tube out and we'd have a, some very interesting shaped bikes. I can see a point in time where a, a designer or a brand will be able to send out uh, to a customer a design for a frame that's custom made for him. He gets the file, prints it out on his machine and he's got a frame that's custom built for him. I certainly see that as being the future as 3D printing becomes more established and cheaper and more cost, and more cost effective. Research and development is, is really governed at the moment. I think, you know, th there has to be some sort of governing on it because otherwise bikes by now would be unrecognisable. Is it restricting bikes being pushed forward into the future? It, definitely a little bit, but, you know, that's, that's the compromise that we have to accept, I think. <laughs>